Coming up... Oh, dear. The Northumbrian sewage team face more than they bargained for. Oh, poo sausage. I'm Helen from Environmental Health. In Worcestershire, the food inspectors are out in force. Do you normally keep your eggs up there all the time? We don't have any rats here. And in Braintree... It's disgusting. I found turds, man. They're on the hunt for some illegal and devious dumpers. We have got a guy out of his truck at the minute. There's no facilities, people who are going to the toilet at the side of the road. All across Britain, there's a battle going on behind closed doors. Every time we order food in a cafe, restaurant or takeaway, we're putting ourselves at risk to a potentially lethal sort of grime. Protecting our health is an army of food inspectors. That's not very nice. Food waste, flies everywhere. That's not acceptable at all. Every year, they scrutinise places up and down the country. I can't. Why would you have to be so rude? It's all too yeah. much pressure. More than 7,000 of those fail basic hygiene rules every year. This is really serious. And if you don't get this right, you could kill somebody. With up to 500 deaths a year from food poisoning, it's a serious business. In the county of Worcestershire, environmental health officers Helen Groves and Eamon Rogers are dividing in order to conquer as they head out on routine spot checks. Today, I'm going to a place called The Filling Station. It's a um, mobile cafe on an industrial estate. I am going to do a food hygiene inspection on a premises called the Duke of York. The kitchens will be rated on a scale of five down to zero, with zero being a disaster. On their last inspections, both premises received low scores. It was inspected last November, and um, my colleague gave it a level one food hygiene rating, which is um, poor. One of my colleagues have been in there about three years ago and gave the premises a food hygiene rating of three. Both restaurants are under pressure, and today's unscheduled visits will turn up the heat. They won't be expecting the visit at all. We go in and on and out to the vast majority of our, our food premises. This will be a surprise. If these fastidious inspectors don't like what they find, it could be kitchen closed. Hi there. Hi. I'm Helen from Environmental Health. But it's not just kitchens where the war against grime is waged. And in Essex's lush pastures, charming villages and bustling towns, there's a smear on the landscape. And in Braintree, one man is making it his personal mission to fight back. Environmental Enforcement Officer Stuart Thompson. The prodigy, they were from Braintree, the band. Uh, Ollie Murs. I'm a Braintree boy. I'm proud to be an Essex boy and, and from the Braintree, definitely. Uh, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of for that. Um, I'll say, uh, I think it's a nice area. I uh, want to keep it that way. I aim to make Braintree the cleanest district in the county. Apparently, I have a bit of a reputation uh, for being sort of quite harsh and quite mean. We can't necessarily be nice in this line of work. You, you can be polite and courteous, but you, you need to get the result. Ex-army man Stu's been kept busy. 18 years on the job, keeping his district spick and span. This morning, he's already received a report about a litter-infested lay-by, causing concern for local residents. Morning. Oh, blinking egg. <laughs> we please, for you. please get us in the door and have a coffee. No, no time for coffee. Oh, my days. Stuart's sending out his crack team of environmental officers, Claire Aldridge and Mark Carlo, to investigate the problem. The team deal with anything from large-scale fly tips to abandoned dogs, and today they're heading to a fly tip hotspot off a busy bypass. Why do you think this place is such an issue? I think it's because it's remote and it's a main road through to bigger towns. Just about 50 yards up on the right, we'll put our lay by. Do you want to do start the far end? I thought uh, there'd be more. Um, feces. 
Has it just been washed we away? We haven't looked that close yet. No, true. What's that? What's what? What are you pointing at? That long brown... Oh, it's a corn cob. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a Durex packet thingy there. Last year, Braintree environmental teams spent over £1 million cleaning up rubbish of all sorts. Bottle of urine there. Well, it certainly doesn't look like Diet Coke. Love a condom. Oh, sh What? I don't know what that smell is, but it ain't very nice. Oh, what's this? There we go. Nice. Yeah, they brought a box of tissues with them as well, by the looks of it. Public defecation carries a fine of up to £1,000. But first, they need to prove who's done the dirty deed, and for that, they need solid evidence. Right next to the poo, look, there's a damaged iPhone. Get information off of that? Probably. So, yeah. should I take some pictures? Probably should do. I thought we'd find more, to be perfectly honest. I think it may have been washed away, mightn't it? Yeah. With the rain. But because it is so muddy, we haven't been into the field itself. So I think probably the field is going to be quite bad as well, isn't it? There's nothing we can do. I say, there's not going to be any evidence, so... And it is a mess, so... Do you want to find it in the customer services? It's becoming a bit of a problem, isn't it, finding this human faeces in all these laybys and lorry yeah. parks and things? I've got a catalogue of poo pictures on my phone. Armed with photographic evidence, the team head back to the office to give Stuart an update. All right. Human poo. <sighs> oh, Human. my God. Where was that? That was down at um, the bypass, the lay-by. <sighs> well, someone's got a serious problem. But <laughs> someone's we've, got a serious problem. We, we've also got a problem down there, haven't we? We have, yeah, so... OK, so I'll, I'll give that some thought and the best way forward mm -hmm. on and how we're going to deal with that. The team need to establish whether this roadside is just part of a much bigger problem and the exact scale of the job before them. If you can get back out there, have a look around some of these hot spots. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Coming up, things are hotting up in the kitchen as the inspections begin. I just need a few details from you before we go here. Yeah, that's fine. Can I just put my ice cubes in? And in Braintree... Ooh, what is that? Stuart's battle with the brown stuff really begins. There's a bag of poo on the side of the road. All over Britain, our favourite takeaways and restaurants are under the microscope from environmental health officers who have the power to shut them down. And in Worcestershire, Inspectors Helen and Eamon are on surprise spot checks at two different locations. You don't mind if I, I just got ice cubes to put away? I've just got back from... You work away, work away, Sorry, work away. Know. Right, so the story is, this man here, he's uh, just opening up. The chef is away to a funeral, um, so he's a bit flustered at the moment. Yeah. Owner Miles has no chef, no staff, and a surprise inspection just as he's preparing for the lunchtime rush. Right, I just need a few details from you before we go here. Yeah, that's fine. Can I just put my ice cubes away? Yeah, put your ice cubes away. That's the most important thing. Some people have white coat syndrome. It's fear of people in white coats. Some people say whenever they, they see a white coat, then they start to get crosser. And... You're responsible for any repairs. On the other side of the county, at the filling station cafe, owner John is also on tenterhooks. All right, then, so what I'll do is I'll go in the kitchen, have a look around, and then... Yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. When I see the environmental health officers um, pulling up in a car, I think, oh, God, here we go. The last inspection at the cafe a disappointing score of one. So Helen is looking for a massive improvement. So what, with the fridges, we're looking for... Temperatures of less than eight degrees. We've got an infrared here, so we're not... There's some... Looks like chilli con carne in here, so that's 4.3, so that's good. Just checking the milk's all in date. That's fine. Guidelines set out very specific temperatures restaurant food has to be kept at in order to avoid the risk of bacteria thriving and endangering lives. So the hot holding temperature's got to be above 63, 65. 
This is your warmer, is it? You just yeah. pop things in there, just... Just keep them warm till they come until they come. So they're making an order and then... You yeah, just yeah, put, so, so it's a limited amount of time? Limited amount of yeah. time, yeah. OK. There's just more sort of cleaning required. Just call me Basil. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have any rats here. Yeah. <laughs> Joking. Back at the Duke of York, Worcestershire's answer to Basil Fawlty is attempting to lighten the mood. We're a traditional country pub. We don't do pool tables, we don't have jukeboxes, sky television. We're just a pub where people come to enjoy each other's company, really. But Eamon's not looking for a quiet pint and a natter. Any paper for his drying hands? Yeah, oh, hang on a sec. Just there, look, just there. All right, don't Sorry, Eamon. Well, I suppose for, for, a, for any food business, what you want to see whenever you walk into the kitchen is paper and soap um, and a clean wash hand basin. Of all the days. <laughs> it's not a great start for Miles's kitchen. OK, so we're going to walk now out to the storage area. So, yeah, Miles, if you, if you can, spend a bit of time and clean in behind those freezers. Yeah, yeah. There's all that there stuff there, Miles, stuff that you... Oh, you buy that in Cotswold that, that, That's pudding and pies, pies yes. Yeah. So what I will do is I'll freeze... I'll keep some in the freezer. Are you with me? But it comes in fresh. Comes in fresh. Yeah. And I freeze them. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? And I'll show you the fresh ones here. These, these came to me on Wednesday. They're nice pies, aren't they? Miles should be putting date labels on all his food the day it comes in. Without those, he's no way of knowing if the pies are safe to eat. Do you normally keep your eggs up there all the time? Never go anywhere else. Yeah. What I do is have the eggs up there that you need for your service, and then keep the other ones in the fridge. The other thing is, do, do you have a, a uniform? Not All right, deal, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Usually, staff will wear an apron or a, some type of uniform. It's really to protect the food from them rather than the other way around. And as well, the other thing is, uh, is obviously to recommend that they wear some sort of head gear, <laughs> hats. With the lunchtime rush fast approaching, getting these kitchens up to the inspector's demanding standards is a tall order. It's all rusted away, yeah. hasn't it? And in County Durham, those fighting the war on grime have met a new nemesis, the weather. Some of the heaviest downpours on record have left some areas struggling with blocked drains, overflowing toilets and escaped sewage. Ready to go? Aye, aye. Heading into the cesspool trenches every day are Steve Green and Grant Davenport, in charge of surveying and maintaining Northumbria's drains to ensure the pipes keep flowing. But a sewer flooding, woman's rang in, said our, our manhole's overflowing and sewage is spilling out all over our field. They've received their first job of the day, and it's looking like a messy one. Toilet paper, sanitary products spilling out of the drain. We know we've got a duty of, obviously, to go there, go check the manholes, see what's what, take it from there. Oh, stay there, flower. I'll tell you what, I'll be nice, shall I? There you go, love, get in your taxi. There you go, see how nice I was there. Some people would have just drove straight through there. Saint, you're a saint. Saint. Saint Stevie boy. They may be a pair of drain pipe angels, but an overflowing manhole can be a devil to clean. <sighs> right, we're going down our screen and see what we've got. Oh, manhole. And it has been going over. As you can see, we have got um, sewage litter around. We've got the all too familiar wipe. Loads of them down here in this corner. Around here, you can see where it's been overflown. It looks like it's been coming over quite a velocity, judging by how far up the, up the fence some of this stuff is. Um, but, you know, you've got, you've got your wipes, like your baby wipes and stuff. Um, there's a big thing at the moment about flushable wipes. No such thing. Most wet wipes contain polyester fibre, which is a form of plastic. So while they might flush, once they've disappeared round your U-bend, they live on, taking years to break down, leaving a legacy of environmental carnage. But we also have sanitary products. This field's supposed to have horses in it. The, the customers had to take the horses out because at the end of the day, you know, they could end up choking on this. 
93% of drain blockages are caused by wet wipes. So Steve and Grant are expecting the worst. I'll pop these lifters up and we'll get this cover up and have a look. I'll... That's flowing lovely, that, actually. I have a feeling what's maybe happened is I think it's just overflowing with the, the, the volume of rain we've had. We're going to go back to the van, get some bags, get some litter picks, and we'll get all this picked up. Unfortunately, we do get used to this. We are used to it as a part of our job now, you know. It's not my favourite part of the job. That's about it, I think. The dynamic duo may have cleared up this problem, but the struggle to keep the drains clear goes on. And it's not just underground where war is waged on the brown tide. Braintree in Essex is facing one of the filthiest problems ever to hit the district. I don't know what that smell is, but it ain't very nice. Oh! Human poo. Well, someone's got a serious problem. But <laughs> someone's we've, got a serious problem. We, we've also got a problem down there, haven't we? We have. With reports of fresh deposits being made daily, team manager Stuart is keeping the pressure on to get to the bottom of it. This afternoon, while Mark and Claire process their evidence from the mobile phone they found, Stuart's heading out alone to another area attracting a large number of complaints, an industrial estate near Haverhill. The human faeces is probably, probably one of the most vile things that you can come across, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's just... No need for it, is it? I think I've got quite a strong stomach, but when it comes to that, it's, uh, it's not the best. I know people might get caught short or anything else, but not in my district. Come on, that's disgusting. Calls point the finger of blame at lorry drivers delivering day and night to a nearby business. The truckers are suspected of depositing a lot more than their normal loads. Okay. I'm looking down below because I don't want to tread in anything. That would be a very bad day. There's wet wipes on the floor, and that's never a good sign. That looks like a bottle of urine in there, if I had to hazard a guess. Put, put the bottle in the bin. Come on, what's the matter with you people? Yeah. That's a bottle of urine. Ooh. What is that? Oh, there's a bag of poo on the side of the road. Oh. Once you find one, number two's not far behind. Oh. I would say that is, again, human faeces. That is disgusting. I've seen enough. I'll satisfy the complaint. It's justified. Hello, mate. This Haverhill one is disgusting. I found turds, man. So I think we need to arrange to uh, get this cleared. You lot are doing it now. I've done my bit. Above and beyond, no more turds. And there's reports from another couple of locations as well, isn't there? All right, see you later. Bye. Oh. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I hope I didn't tread in it. Having witnessed firsthand the full scale of the roadside dumpers, Stuart wants to clean up the problem. It looks like we're going to have to do a nighttime visit out here. We need to catch people that are doing this. That, that is absolutely disgusting. This is where people walk. It's gross. Certainly don't want any lunch now. Absolutely disgusting. With dirty protests appearing all over Braintree, Stuart's goal to wipe the town clean has only just begun. Coming up, it's the moment of truth for the restaurants. The voting for a four. And in Braintree, it's all hands on deck as the search goes on. Another poo job just come in on the lucky one. In Worcestershire, Two local eateries are being put to the test by environmental health officers Helen and Eamon. I think at some, at some stage without their Chain, yeah. microwave, you want to be changing it because yeah, it's, it's not really yeah. easy to clean. If the kitchens don't come up to scratch, they could be facing closure. So where do things happen? What happens here? What happens uh, here? Quite simple. Salads are done here. Mm -hmm. Fish is done there Yeah. on the different boards like we do fish and chips or salmon sea bass. 
Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all the prep, like the veg and the salads are done here. The kitchens may look clean to the untrained eye, but the final test is to hunt for any invisible nasties lurking on the worktops. What we do as well now, I don't know if my colleague did it the last time, a swab. So what it does, it basically measures uh, how well the surface has been disinfected. It just tells you that the surface is clean or not clean, OK? So we take a little swab. Put it in. This is a clean board off the um, side there, um, off the wash-up area, so we'll see. And we put it into this little machine here, and we look for a number of less than 200, OK? Right, OK. As I say, I'll be able to tell by your reaction whether this is less than 200 or not. I so wasn't drinking last night. I only had a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> so it will beep whenever... 219. 219. Right, OK. Just over. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll not get too excited about that there. I think as, as long as it's in around 200, it's, it's okay. OK. But things aren't so close to a clean 200 for John at the filling station. So it's 1,017, so it's a bit high. So I suppose the question is, I got that board from over there. So, so was that, would that generally be sanitised before you use it? Or would you they just... would do wash it, wash it down with a the spray. Yes, yeah, OK. Spray so would yeah. that happen here? Yeah, they do. We do bugs all the time with sprays, yeah. Right. The bacteria-killing spray should keep most bugs like E. coli and Salmonella at bay. But the inspectors aren't just checking the worktops. We'll do an R one here, and we'll do it on the wash hand basin. OK. OK? The hand wash basin is a particular concern to Eamon, as every kitchen shift should start with clean hands. Right, OK, go. 60. 60, there you go. So. Thank if you. If you look at that, that's it's the, proved that it is that, clean. That's the difference. So <laughs> Thank that, you very that, much. That may not look clean, but it is clean. Eamon's seen enough to deliver his verdict. Cleaning out the back there, behind right. the fridges and sure. freezers, a little bit of cleaning onto the equipment. OK. Um, with those pies that are coming in, uh, if, date you, them when if we you freeze. can date them when okay. you freeze them. Sure. From, from a scoring point of view, you're probably, you, you are where you were. Uh, before you were a, a three for food hygiene right. rating, and I think you're more or less in the same place now, okay, which is you. sort of middle but of I'll the But I'll make room. sure that we do a, a better housekeeping. Right? Yeah, About yeah. out of sight, out of mind, I do understand. Yeah. So can and I, I, can I car peel the carrots and crack on the bench? Yes, go for it, go for right. it. Right. It's business as usual for Miles. But for John at the cafe, who last time scored a one out of five, the tension is mounting. Today it's come out as a three, OK? okay. I've opened for a four, yeah, but... Three yeah. really is, because I think we've done quite a lot. Obviously, I didn't do the other inspection, but I think this is a significant improvement from before. Yeah, yeah. There's still yeah. a bit more, still a bit more work to do in there. The filling station may have got a high swab score, but they've scraped by. This time, although it was a surprise this morning, um, having all the staff off for the day <laughs> and everything happens at once, it was a great surprise. And I have to say, it's been a very constructive visit. It really has. Right, right let you get on with it. Thanks, mate. Thanks yeah, Considering he didn't know that there was a health inspector coming in, I thought he was, he was very reasonable, uh, very jolly. Whenever you get a nice guy, um, you like to see a good score. OK, the score there was, was a three. Uh, it wasn't really going to be a four or a five. They've got a bit of cleaning to do, but generally, you know, it, it, it's OK. It just needs a little bit, bit of work to get it up to um, a level five. This time, both kitchens have survived to cook another day. But there will always be another inspection just around the corner. Up the M1 near Durham, there's another team of unsung heroes who regularly have their feet in our faeces. Where there's poo, there's luck. We should be millionaires. Every day, Steve and Grant have the mammoth task of keeping the pipes, drains and toilets of Northumbria's sewage system flowing freely. See what we've got. These drain pipe warriors fight an ongoing battle to keep our underground pipes blockage free and keep on top of damage caused by everyday flushing. But Stephen Grant have a helping hand in their fight against grime technology. 
we've come a long way since the old days of literally just poking pool with sticks at one point, but now we've, we've got all sorts of bits of kit on the van which can, can help us out. Um, just, it gives us eyes in the sewer. It's absolutely fantastic bit of kit. And with 30,000 kilometres of sewer to regularly maintain, it's also essential, whatever the weather. A quick, all of a sudden, downpour, lashes down for, can even be five, ten minutes, can create a lot of problems um, and overwhelm the sewer system. Um, the thing that people, it always makes me laugh when you see people running around in the street through these puddles, playing in the puddles when it's flooding. Half of them don't realise what's actually in them, in them puddles when they're running through them. Don't want to know what comes up in the street, do you? No, you yeah. Or the sewers. Yeah. Let's put it this way, I wouldn't be drinking it. I suppose it puts a whole new definition on the game poo sticks. In the UK, sewer floods hit up to 3,000 homes a year. So for teams like Steve and Grant, it's a never-ending task, maintaining and surveying for potential blockages. We've got our sewer running down the middle, um, on uh, this side of us, right next to a churchyard. They'll also be looking for litter dropped on the roadside, which could end up blocking our drains. Hey. The only way to see through the debris is with the latest in sewage technology. Yeah, well, this is um, a tractor unit with a CCTV camera on it. Thanks to this high-tech camera, they'll get an insider view of the drains. That's at our smallest capabilities now, which is going to fit like a bug in a rug. Go on in. The camera will pick up any problems, which, if left untreated, could cause a sewage Armageddon. This coming up here is... I'll stop that there. There's a very minor little bit of fat and grease. Um, we call it fog, it's fat oil grease. The UK water companies respond to 300,000 sewer blockages a year. Up to 75% of those are caused by fat, oil and grease. Coming up to a... Uh, oh, hold on. Stop there, Grant. That's interesting. A nice disposable bottle has been chucked in the street and it's ended up in the road gully and stuck in the connection. Plastic bottles can take up to 450 years to break down. So if there's one in your drain, the sludge simply won't budge. That could cause us an issue, um, especially if it manages to make its way halfway into our sewer, because by the length of it, it may not actually get turned and come down the sewer. What could happen is that could come out and come straight across. And if that ends up from, from here, going back into that connection, we've got a massive obstruction in our sewer and there is literally um, poo running down your road, um, raw sewage, which is it's not the best, not the best thing to have. Now our camera won't be able to get past this, so I'm going to have to basically abandon this survey now, um, and it's going to have to be done at a, at a later date at more expense to us, or because somebody's chucked the bottle out of the car window. The camera's going to need a quick clean when it comes out, because at the moment it's uh, swimming in the brown stuff, definitely. Bring that bug out, ground a bit. With the survey done, it's back on the road for their next big job. But it's not just underground where the grime is lurking. Above ground, 250 miles south, Braintree, Essex is under attack. I'm just praying that I'm going to walk along and not tread in a turd. That's, that's all I can hope. From an onslaught of human faeces. Growing numbers of phantom pooers are dropping their load on the roadside, leaving Stuart and the team knee-deep in defecation. Oh, there's a bag of poo on the side of the road. Stuart's on the warpath, attacking the problem from every angle, and has caught one of the culprits on a fly-tipping surveillance camera. I've got a gentleman defecating in the ditch. Got his registration. That's him. Oh. Ugh. With such clear evidence, the man will be the first to hear from the council and feel Stuart's wrath. In the meantime, Stuart's sending three of his team out to follow up even more complaints from members of the public. Another poo job just come in to me, as always. I'm the lucky one. Tony Lynch is no stranger to sniffing out the brown stuff, but he's not the only one heading out. Today, Mark and Claire are once more on Poo Patrol. So why do you think this place is such an issue? I think um, the roads between the towns are very um, rural. Not a lot of people can be witnessed doing stuff. No one's seen the phantom dumpers in action, 
but the team are investigating reports from members of the public about solid evidence. Information we've just received that it's a homeless gentleman who's using that particular area his own personal toilet. But I need to find both. I need to find him and his poo, or the poo. Dog poo is one thing, but human poo, I mean, yeah, I know people get caught short or whatnot, but this is an area that people take their dogs walking on. We know children play on here. And um, it's just a disgusting thing to, to, to be doing. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a poo in a haystack now. Um, find a location, find the poo, find the man. OK. Let's dig it out. Well, if that's it, he's on a really bad diet. That looks like paint and plaster. <laughs> So he's obviously been eating um, paint and plaster. I don't think that's it. That looks like toilet paper, doesn't it? Oh. Mark, I think we've got some poo down here. This here looks, on the face of it, it's just normal soil that's been turned over, but it is a different colour. Oh, don't. I can't watch you poking that around. Look. <laughs> Got to really be careful where I put my foot now. Okay, just have a little look. I can't, I can't see it happening in here. Not whoever's called it in has got it mixed up. They've got it mixed up with uh, with the plaster mix and uh, and the paint. I mean, it, yeah, from from a distance it could look like runny poo, um, but I'll get the guys to just clear it up. It's our land at the end of the day. Hello, mate. We have been asked to come out and find what appeared to be human poo. However, I've had a good scout around and I can confirm there's no human poo. Does this look like it could be toilet paper as well? Yes. That does look like toilet roll, doesn't it? There's definitely a faeces problem here. So we'll, have, again, go back and debrief with our top dog, Stuart. Back at headquarters, in a concerted effort to strike back at the demon dumpers, Team leader Stewart decided to home in on the worst hit area. Okay, so we've got an issue uh, up in uh, by Haverhill. So we want to go and hit it, and I want to go and hit it tonight, and that's a bit sort of last minute. Okay. But I'm looking for volunteers, so Claire, you in? No, I can't make it, sorry. Okay, Tone? Yeah, I'm up. Do it. L? Yeah, okay. Yeah. James? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, all right, so do you want to come up there and we'll have a quick chat about it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> OK, so the problem we've got is the lorries all park up there overnight, lots of litter, lots of human faeces. I've been up there and it's everywhere and it is disgusting. We've got some photos from the visits oh. when we were done up there. Lovely. Very nice. The only time we're getting complaints about it is when they're parked up there. And if that's in the evening, that's when we're going to have to go and do it. So tonight, I want to go up there, see what trucks are up there, see any offences, go over and deal with them. We're going to knock on the cabs of the trucks speak to the drivers, make them aware what the complaint is, what we're doing, and what the repercussions are if anyone of caught doing it. So everyone know what they're doing? Yeah, no yeah. worries. Everyone happy? Yeah, yeah good, yeah. good, good. Crack good. on, let's go then. OK, let's do it. Coming up, in Durham, there's something new on the menu for Steve. Oh, poo sausage. And in Braintree... We have got a guy out of his truck at the minute. Stuart and his team get the lowdown on the Lorry Park doo-doo. There's no facilities, people who are going to toilet at the side of the road. In the ancient city of Durham, there's a problem rumbling underground in their 19th century sewers. Train defenders Steve and Grant have been called out to a house where an unknown obstacle is causing problems. So, on our way to a property at Piddington, um, which is uh, a blockage. Um, the lady says our toilet's um, not flushing properly. It's not so we we'll go and see what can help. In five years on the job, Steve and Grant have seen it all, and toilet blockages are one of the most frequent calls they get. Let's go and see what we've got, eh? Yep. To flush out the problem, they need to start with the drains outside. Oh, dear. Yeah, right, yeah. 
There's your culprit. The next one. Yeah, the next one. Oh, poo sausage. There it is. There's the issue. Go and get the hose. With 45 million toilets flushing in the UK at least five times a day, it's no surprise not every poo gets through. I've got a nice, what looks like a, a, a large haggis or black pudding sticking out of the pipe. It's, it's right on a bend, and we've got what is affectionately called a poo sausage. Um, it's, it's basically just a, something snagged um, initially, and that eventually over the time builds up and builds up and builds up, and you end up with just the, the, your blockage. This one doesn't smell too bad, but then again, I think I'm a bit nose blind when it comes to comes to sewage. We sometimes go to people's houses for orders, and they're, they're like, "Can you not smell that?" And we're just like, "No, I, I, unfortunately, I can't." Not a bad thing in this line of work, though. Not a bad thing at all. We'll probably end up just washing it down because it's just a soft blockage. Turn that on, buddy. More powerful than your average garden hose, the jet clears it all in minutes. The Dream Drain Pipe team have got things flowing once more. You've done a beautiful job there, Steve Ladd. It is beautiful, isn't it? How no. they all graft as per normal, like. I'll tell you. You just stand there and press a couple of buttons, mate. Rule number one about work, do no work. See, that's just idleness. For Grant and Steve, today's big job's been flushed away. But down in Braintree, Essex, the environmental protection team are in the middle of a battle of the brown stuff. There's a lot of trucks down here, isn't yeah, there? Oh, yeah. look, there's another one even coming now. Stuart Thompson and his band of merry men are working late on a lorry lay-by stakeout. Lorry, lorry, lorry. More lorries. The area's been hit by a deluge of human feces. And tonight, they're heading to an industrial estate near Haverhill, one of the worst-hit roadsides. Stuart and his team suspect the parked-up lorry drivers are to blame, so they're here at its busiest time for a spot of surveillance. Plan of action. Yep. I think out of the vehicles, get two of you down one end, servers up this end, yep. and monitor as best we can. Witness anything, issue a notice here. Yeah? Fix penalty notice. Okay. Right. <laughs> I've never seen so many trucks in one location. Yeah, it's quite, seen... quite a lot, actually. It's not long before Tony spotted some potentially criminal activity. We have got a guy out of his truck at the minute. He's keeping an eye on us, so we're just discreetly keeping an eye as well. So he's really interested in his tyres now. And now he's, yeah, he's gone to the back. I can smell poo. <laughs> Seriously, I can smell it. <laughs> Tony's super senses are on high alert. I can smell it. Yeah, I can. It is nearby. I can't smell a thing. Do you not smell it? No. I can smell it. Pungent. Let's have a look. Like a human sniffer dog, Tony's nose has picked up the offending scent. I can smell it. Seriously, I can smell it. I can really smell it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Got it. Oh! There she be. I told you I could smell it. It's come from one of these trucks, isn't it? Yeah. But the trouble is we don't know. That's the problem. you got to literally catch him in the act. And You've literally got to catch him with the pants down. See, I told you, my nose is never wrong. Never did. With no one else in sight, suspicions mount about the lorry drivers. What's he doing? Spotted us. Yeah, they all suddenly want to check their tyres, yeah, didn't they? still there. We've been here for a couple of hours. Uh, people are starting to notice, notice us. We've seen a few guys get out of their lorries and sort of lorry about. We think they're going to do something, and they sort of notice us, and they pretend they're, like, checking their tyres and that, and then they either get back in the cab or, or walk off. They may have found some very fresh evidence, but the suspects remain as elusive as a toilet around these parts. Who are you? I'm Branch Council. Who are you? All right. I'm the driver of this truck. Yeah.
the lorry driver reveals he and the other truckers have been waiting for nearly six hours to make deliveries to the same company. All these lorries parked here, how was that right? Parked outside of business. Because they're making this park down here. Yeah. I don't want to be parked here, I want to be, I want to be the park, in the park, away. The parking down here, right, I ain't parking officer. I don't right. deal with parking. No, no. Right, it's so we, we, we're enforcement officers, and the reason we're down here is because the amount of litter yeah. and that are down here, that's it, yeah. and including people yeah. crapping. Yeah, on that's the verge. it, yeah. It's, and it's that's, disgusting. Yeah, that's absolutely, just, yeah. yeah. And, that's what, and that's the reason yeah. we're down here tonight. Yeah, good. I'm a lorry driver. I've come here from France to deliver a, a load to a local company, and I'm forced from 2, 2 pm this afternoon to park on this industrial estate with no facilities whatsoever. Because there's no facilities, people are going to toilet at the side of the road, there's excrement, there's, you know, rubbish everywhere, bottles of urine. It upsets me that this is what our industry's come to. Now you told us that, because I didn't know which business they were going into, yeah, so now you told us that, we will go down there in a minute and I mean, I'll be speaking yeah. to them. It might be late in the evening, but armed with this new information, Stuart and Tony demand answers from the company. Well, we've got a problem. We're getting a lot, a lot of complaints. Because part that, the bit down there, the other side of the roundabout going down, we're getting inundated with complaints about the lorries down there. Drivers are crapping on the verges. Now, we speak to them, and they're all saying, well, they're all scheduled in here like hours ago, and they're all stuck sitting down there. So what, what is going to be a resolution here? The problem is that company is the one that's causing the problems. You know, if, if they're scheduling deliveries at these times, why are these lorries all still sat here? The guys are stuck here for hours and hours and hours. They may not have caught someone with their trousers down, but at least they found the source of the problem. My enforcement strategy is you follow every case. You don't give up and you follow it all the way through. They all say I'm like a dog with a bone and never give up. Let's get them out. And we still are improving. Well, the offences are still occurring. We need to go out there and catch them. Next time on the front line of filth. The enforcement officers stubbing out little outs in Essex. The fine is £100. What? Bristol's workers cleaning up the bowels of payday carnage. Oh, that's terrible. Stinks, doesn't it? Yeah, vile and nailing Harrow's most brazen cross-county fly-tipper. I have a passionate hatred of fly-tippers. I'm pretty driven to catch them.